behind me is MP Richard Drax's estate. He owns 2% of Dorset, he's probably the richest landowning MP, and his familial wealth is directly linked to the slave trade. Richard Drax is the Conservative MP for Dorset South, and essentially a modern day feudal lord. This is his estate, Charba Park. It's surrounded by a three mile wall known locally as the Great Wall of Dorset. Educated at Harrow, he's been a journalist, a soldier, and now a politician. The latest in a long line of Draxes to be a Dorset MP. If he sounds like a relative empire, that's because he is. His family developed and perfected the sugar plantation, bringing chattel slavery to Barbados. The key person really in the Drax family and in the history of the Caribbean, if, if it's going to be a single person, is James Drax. He sailed out to Barbados on the first ship taking settlers to what was then a completely empty island. He arrived in 1627 and some 20 years later he was the force behind the sugar revolution in Barbados. What James Drax did was establish um, the first successful sugar plantation. I mean you could say that Drax was the Henry Ford of the sugar business. Crucially he was the first person to shift from employing indentured white labour to enslaved black labour. And certainly Shane Drax um, was you know, certainly live like, a, live like a prince. Richard Drax still owns Drax Hall Estate, a large plantation which uh, his ancestors acquired centuries ago. One of Drax's ancestors wrote a handbook on how to mobilise and exploit transported Africans in order to maximise profits from the plantation economy. So he literally wrote the book on... Absolutely. The, the handbook. It is estimated that 30,000 African men, women and children died on the Drax estate. Historian Hilary Beckel said the Drax family has done more harm and violence to the black people of Barbados than any other. And now the Barbadian government is considering plans to make him pay reparations. Closer to home, there's a group of his constituents piling on the pressure. Richard Drax, your time is up! Slavery justice now! Richard Drax, your time is up! Slavery justice now! Richard Drax, your They say he's not just letting Barbados down, but his constituency too. Richard Drax, your time is up! Slavery justice now! Death. This wall, this wall was built by Black Death. This is Chris Brady. He's one of Richard Drax's constituents. It's a big estate mm -hmm. with a, a beautiful, gracious house in it. So and the extraordinary thing is, I find Ed, is that our MP who lives behind this wall, you know, is the MP of a constituency with many inequalities, mm -hmm. significant deprivation, who's done very little to level up. Well, how safe is Drax's seat? Well, this is the extraordinary thing. He's got a majority of 11,000, mm -hmm. but the election in 2019 was a Brexit election. Right. Which attracts us very much a Brexiteer. Mm -hmm. Chris and other members of Stand Up To Racism Dorset had arranged for David Denny, a Barbadian reparations activist, to visit Dorset and see the estate that his ancestors may well have died for. Something that Drax's people weren't Hello, taking kindly to. And his colleague Harry. Nice to meet you. Lovely to meet you. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah. We've already got some aggravation from. Uh -huh. um, yeah, yeah. We're getting aggravation. The estate's manager so has aggro, come Harry. across us oh. and. Um, what, what have they said? Parked his car by the gate to try to block. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, the walls, very yeah. hypersensitive about this. This guy's just going to take you. Take you. Slight overreaction for a photo opportunity, I'd argue. <laughs> the estate's manager of the uh, of Richard Drax's estate, he's parked his car to try and disrupt this. David, do you want to get where's David? I'm here. <laughs> Richard Drax, your time is up! Slavery justice now! Richard Drax, your time is up! Slavery justice now! Our people were crucified. Our people were murdered. Our people were exploited. And the Drax family, they're the ones who benefited. In, ter in terms of Richard Drax himself, what action would you like to see him take? Reparation can be paid in the form of upgrading schools in Barbados, especially in St. George, where 
Drax Hall Plantation is located. Polyclinics and hospitals, the infrastructure in Barbados, especially in St. George. The housing structure, because many Barbadians live in very poor communities where houses are serious problems for them. Reparation can also be paid in giving our people academic scholarships. I and mean, then what would you tell Richard Drax directly, if you could speak directly to him? If I can speak directly to Richard Drax, I would tell him to look into the mirror and ask himself one question and follow the answer. And that question would be, is it fear? Okay, look in the mirror and ask that question, ask himself that question, is it fear for humanity to suffer and others become very, 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 very rich. I think perhaps Mr. Drax would say he shouldn't be held responsible for the actions of his ancestors. But he should be, because he's a beneficiary. If he want to be kind to the people, well then pay them reparation. Look at this plantation, look at this estate, and look at the conditions of the people. So that's why he needs to look into the mirror. It's quite obvious that Drax won't discuss reparations with people standing with placards outside his garden wall. But what happens when one of his constituents tries to go through the proper channels to discuss it? I wrote to Mr. Drax and he wrote back to me, and, well, the secretary wrote back to me and said that you don't discuss family matters, it's a private business. Do you think it's a family matter, the issue? Well, it can't be a family matter. This great big wall, his father James Jack's been to the Caribbean, he was the f first slave ship. He, well, he had two slave ships. He was the first slave trader. Mm. To Barbados. So it's obvious this great big wall that we stand in, this is black black people's sweat and blood, death. This all, this wall was built by black death. This is the black death wall. I wanted to know more about Drax as a local MP. A few of his ancestors have been MPs for Dorset, making it something of a family business. Philip Marfleet is both the chair of Stand Up to Races in Dorset and an academic. He's written a report into the decline of Weymouth and Portland, two towns in South Dorset, describing them as forgotten. You've written a report describing Weymouth as a forgotten town. Yes. Why do you say that? Well, Weymouth and Portland, which are very close together and have economically and socially been linked over many generations, uh, are two towns which over the last 30 years have gone into very, very abrupt decline. In the 1990s, the major military installations and the port in the area were effectively shut down. And that was the equivalent of shutting down, <clears throat> in other parts of the country, shutting down a coal field or a steelworks. Um, but there'd been very little attention paid to the consequences. One of the consequences was that in 2017, Weymouth and Portland had the lowest average weekly wages in the UK. A very striking statistic. In 2018, South Dorset, uh, a parliamentary constituency represented by Richard Drax, had the lowest level of social mobility of all constituencies in England. So what we're looking at, we're looking at a record of economic decline and extreme social deprivation over which there's been almost no attention. How has Richard Drax engaged with the report? Uh, he's engaged with the report by responding to local media, by describing the authors of the report, that's myself and Jenny Lennon-Wood, as what he calls naysayers. In other words, people who are somehow trying to do down the area. Well, are they? I went to ask the good people of Weymouth what they made of their local MP. So he's a man called Richard Drax. He lives on Charles. Oh, I know about him. Oh, do you know about Drax? Well, I help do the counting when we have the elections. Oh, really? Um, and he comes in and talks to people. Ah. And he's a very polite, very nice man. And because of that, he exudes confidence. And people like him because he does that. Mm -hmm. And if he speaks on anybody's behalf, he comes across very well. Mm. He doesn't actually seem to do anything. How much do you know about uh, the local MP, Richard Drax? I know where he lives, he's got a big gaff. I mean, he put half a Weymouth in there, couldn't he? I don't think he's done a lot for the area, to be perfectly honest. I think right now, in terms of issues, it's a lot to do with jobs, it's a lot to do with the current housing situation. Mm -hmm. I mean, rents here are just through the roof, and it's just, I mean, for a young person, 
in terms of looking for work and everything. It's, there's just very few and very hard and very few and mm -hmm. not very much to go to in terms of jobs. Like just I feel like not enough money is coming to these places and they're just being abandoned by mm -hmm. the government. And I feel like they're being a, like the, ca the local councils are mainly run by old people. I mean, most people that you see now are older people. There's very few younger people here mm -hmm. in terms of wanting to come down and start new lives. At, to start their lives and to start businesses. There's just no incentives, really. And the people in seaside areas are older. People retire to be in the seaside, don't they? Um, and that's sad because then all the things that are working in, this, in areas like that are for older people. So young people move away, can't afford a house, you know, and all those kind of mm -hmm. things. So it's, I don't know how you fix it. Mm. Big thinking, I think. Has big. to be, yeah, not little thinking. Got to be big thinking. But he's not there saying, yeah. we're going to do this. He's not got a banner and he's not mm. on the seafront saying, we're going to do this or whatever. He just turns up occasionally in would, a lovely suit. But would you like him to do more? He's a nice man. He has the potential and the power mm. to change things, and he doesn't. And he's elected every time. And if there's an election next year, he will be elected again. Is that, disappoint is that disappointing for your local MP? To not yes. be. Yeah. I wonder if there's, is there parallels between how Richard Drax engages with your criticisms of, um, the, of Weymouth and Portland as Forgotten Towns and also how he engages with criticisms of his family's legacy of slavery. He seems to just be hunkering down and ignoring two issues and doing nothing about it, both of which have very pressing concern or very pressing issues for a huge number of people. He has the capability and perhaps the responsibility to deal with these people, to deal with these issues and engage with the people, with his critics, and he's doing, he's doing neither. I think your question is spot on. Um, Richard Drax's posture in relation to his Barbados estate and his family's record and his own wealth accumulated from centuries of uh, exploitation in the Caribbean, his posture is that of denial. And it's almost exactly the same in relation to his constituents. He's almost invisible as an MP. He's often asked to engage with local communities that are struggling over employment, over local services and the like. And the man is almost invisible. And I would ask the question, is this man the worst MP in the House of Commons? Because I think he's well qualified to be identified in that way. He's got a lot to say about the very uh, right-wing agenda, the most extreme elements in the Conservative Party, over issues like refugees and migration and welfare. He has almost nothing to say about the welfare of his constituents. So we're just outside Richard Drax's estate. It's, <laughs> it's just mass it's massive. And we've also got one of his employees just to the right of us. Um, He's just kind of hanging out. He's been here since we arrived at the demonstration. The demonstration was very peaceful. He seems to be quite, quite touchy about it. You'll have heard underneath Phil's interview, the noise of a car engine. Not the most environmentally friendly, but I decided I'd forgive him, if he would have a quick chat with us. Would I be able to ask a quick question about what you're doing? <laughs> I don't know if he can... I think he's ignoring me. Yeah. I think he's ignoring me. I think he's tailing us. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> I don't know, we just started walking away and the car, I think the car's tailing us. We're just looking over the wall. <laughs> so we've just walked away from where the protest was and the car that was there it, it kind of slowly crawled towards us. We were just taking a look over the wall, like just to see, and it's just like kind of forest and stuff. But um, the guy saw him walking, going to the walkie talkie. He refused to answer our questions, but <laughs> I think we're being, we're being surveilled by Drax. There's a car on your right as well, hi. It's the polis. <laughs> so 
So we're just back at the car. Um, <laughs> we're waiting here to see if the driver catches up with us so we can ask why he's following us. He's just around that bend there. I can hear a car coming. It might be him. Um, if, you, <laughs> if you come down here and stop, there's not really anywhere for him to go, so be curious to see if it's him. But we're stopping. He's turning back. <laughs> He's turning right. Hello, I'm back. Interesting. We're touchy about the about this. We did ask Richard Drax for an interview about the issues raised in this film. We did not receive a response.